Here are my 12 tips for Sprouts. Endwalkers launched and you're thinking of jumping over because your game has possibly just decided to eat its own legs. I've been playing FF14 for 5 months now and man, is it a breath of fresh air. But there is so much I did not know when I first started out, so I wanted to share a few things with you, Bellow Sprouts, to make things a little easier for your journey through Eotia. The map. Fast travelling through Eotia is amazing and you'll be doing it constantly. The map is your friend for this. Opening up the map for the first time was pretty intimidating with all kinds of icons everywhere, but you'll soon get the hang of it. To easily teleport anywhere with a large Aetherite crystal that you have attuned with, just open the map and click on the crystal where you want to go. In conjunction with this, you can easily find out where you want to go by clicking on the main scenario quest, or MSQ for short. 2. How to hide gear items on your character Having your character look the way you want them is a big part of any RPG, and FF14 has you covered but not from the get go. You'll have to jump for a few hoops to open up your options. The simple ones, such as hiding your weapon or hiding your hat, helmet or mask, are as simple as selecting the option on the character sheet. Just hit that C button. By speaking to this NPC in the middle of Vespa Bay area, you'll get the quest If I Had a Glamour, which will unlock the ability to cast a glamour, which will allow you to apply a specific look over your armour to look the way you want, but keeping all the stats so you aren't punished for doing so. Then take up your next quest. You'll need a crafter at level 15 to accept it. After finishing her quest, you can then go to the vendor in Vespa Bay to buy the Emperor's new items, which give you invisible items to glamour with. Including fists, if you want to be the punch crew of your dreams. To add these items and any other items you want to glamour with, you'll need to add them to your glamour dresser using glamour prisms so you can set up glamour plates so you can have reusable glamours. To do this, you'll need a fuck ton of glamour prisms so you better not skimp on your grand company. If you do your damn duty and act like the subservient fuck everyone in the Ultia thinks you are, then you'll soon be the vault diving Scrooge McDuck of seals. You also have a handy room full of slaves who'll do your bidding where you can add your glamours or an inn room provided for you for free, because you'll never have a house. Now that you've added your invisible tat, you'll just need to add it to a glamour plate. Don't like that necklace but need those oh so tasty sats? Bang gone! You're welcome. 3. First job? Stay away from side quests. Don't go hoovering up all the quests as if you're a well player who's been told the flying will be unlocked in the next batch. But why wouldn't I just take up all the quests? The MSQ will have more than enough XP to level up your job to max before you finish the latest expansion. Add with all the blue unlock quests and dungeon runs, you'll have enough levels on your job to be a Yotsia Saitama. But the side quests are fun! And they're not going anywhere. Your old jobs won't have the blue unlockables or the MSQ to gain XP. Would you prefer to just do leave quests, dungeon grinding and fate farming to 90? So use those side quests to help give you that extra XP boost for your alt jobs. 4. Learning to Mount You're level 40 and you're running around like a scrub? Where's your chocobo? I've been doing dungeons and I haven't got that far in the MSQ. Getting your mount as soon as you can will help out a lot. Don't be an idiot like me and think you'll get the mount quest when you're high enough level because you won't. Do the MSQ. 5. Gear there is a recommended gear button and it makes life so much easier. I didn't know this forever, just like I didn't notice update gear set forever. When you are level 30, do your job quest and get your job soulstone. You'll need it, as it is what turns a conjurer into a white mage, or Uma Firma into a black mage. Duty finder, the looking for group tool, will not take your gear into account when putting you into a dungeon. So if you stumble upon a dungeon that you can unlock, but you're not geared for it, you will have a rough time. Don't blame the heather if you're a tank and you're still wearing item level 15 gear and decided to tank the Orin Vale. Also, if you are a tank, the recommended gear is based on item level and not your roll stats and can mess you up in AR. It's fixed in the expansions, I believe. 6. Leveling crafting through Grand Company Supply Hand-Ins 
Every day, your chosen grand company will have a list of items and resources you can craft or gather using your respective jobs. You can hand these in for large amounts of XP for said jobs and seals to buy glamour prisms with. When unlocked, you can open that up by pressing Ctrl U. Hit that next mission allowance to find out what you need to hand in. You can craft the stuff yourself or buy it from the market board. High quality items give you double the reward, starred items give you a bonus. 7. Be careful of market board scammers selling vendor items for way over the odds. As friendly as the majority of the experiences you will have in 14, don't underestimate that the game does have bad apples. People will sell items on the market board that can easily be gotten from vendors nearby at exorbitant prices to scam sprouts. I have bought dyes at over the odds as I was not aware that there was a dye vendor in Limsa. 8. Making the most of chat. Sometimes you might want or need to link something. You can right click an item and click the link an item in chat. You can also link quests by clicking on the little icon in the bottom right corner. You can also send messages to other players in their own language using the auto translate function built into 14. To use this, you just have to type in a word then press tab and you'll get a list of possible words to translate. You can identify translated words by the green and red to surrounding arrows. 9. UI Problems One of the biggest flaws of the default 14 UI is the location and size of debuffs leading to a lot of early sprout deaths. Temple of Khan oh, This will be an important part of your UI to solve. I made it larger and moved it to the center. Beware those instant death debuffs. 10. Macros you can have all kinds of macros from the useful to the fun. You can use macros to swap your UI and change jobs to make things nice and snappy. You can use macros to easily use emotes. You can use macros to mouse over characters to heal them without having to do any clicking. Eleven Gold Saucer Easy MGP. Every week, your challenge logs get refreshed. You can easily earn over ten thousand MGP each week by only doing the quickest ones. Each week, you can do the fashion report. If you do well in it, you can earn a ton of MGP. But you can score ten thousand MGP just by entering. The weekly Cackpot Lottery gives you MGP even if you don't win. So no reason not to play it each week. You'll never lose MGP by playing. Twelve. The game is loaded with great content you can easily miss. You have Coils of Bahamut, where you can find out more about what happened in Cartano. Hildebrand, become a detective and solve a mystery, one of the best quest series in the game. Becoming a postperson, revisit familiar faces to help them out. Odin, the horseman in the opening cinematic, a primal fight that wasn't a part of the MSQ. Relic weapons, shiny weapons. Hard mode dungeons, brand new dungeons, not just more HP and damage. Extreme trials, more intense version of the primal fights. I hope these tips will help you in your journey through Oyotia and perhaps steer you to things that you normally may have missed.